Well, sisters and brothers, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk a little bit um, about some of concrete examples about Occupy Wall Street and particularly the struggle um, against racism, um, but more so also how you know I, I really want to just you know concur and appreciate what folks have been saying because. The, the demographics of this movement um, largely have been very white, very middle class, and at the same time, it's had very, um, not only prominent black and Latino and other um, nationalities involved in the struggle, but movements of uh, particularly people of color movements, particularly LGBT movements that, and organizations that have been part of Occupy Wall Street. And I think this is very important because there have been ways that it's been used to sort of do divide and conquer here in this city, as if there aren't black people in leadership and in movement around Occupy Wall Street, and that's just not true. And just talking concretely, folks know about Occupy um, Harlem, right? And, and, and largely, Occupy Harlem was about a um, struggle around housing, and still is a struggle around housing. And one of the things that was led by people of color in Harlem, um, specifically looking at a house that had over uh, 293 violations. And one of the pieces of, of how the Occupy movement kind of got involved is one of the first concrete examples where the money that people talk about being raised was actually used to buy a boiler in that, in that housing, um, in that building that was Occupy Harlem. Now that was a struggle that was led largely by people of color in the um, POC um, working group. But what started to happen was that it started to show sort of the contradictions of, are you, are, you know, it's one thing to occupy this place down here in the middle of downtown New York, but what does it mean about the rest of the boroughs? What does it mean about the struggles going on that are happening every single day here in New York City, and how are you a part of it? And so we started to see things like, for instance, Occupy Harlem called for a march to the African burial ground right around there about Zuccotti Park. And the Occupy movement said, yes, we need to be in solidarity with something like this and called and said, this is a demonstration we need to support. For instance, when Obama came to Harlem, and this is again another bone of contention, the newspapers built the demonstration that happened around it as outside agitators coming up to Harlem. But that was led by black leaders, by activists of our Occupy Harlem that called for it to other folks come in, come to, to, the, to the Apollo, and be part of this struggle. And again, this whole understanding, there's been a lot written about whether this was outside agitators. And it's like, no, these are the homegrown folks calling in to the fact of the gentrification happening in Harlem, calling the fact about the unemployment happening of black people right here in New York City this was a homegrown struggle, and not outside somewhere else. Oh, excuse me, just a second. <laughs> Thank you, yes, okay. Computers. But one of the things I want to just raise, and just again point as example, and I think it's really important, this is not just happening in New York, but also around the country. I mean, things like even Occupy Oakland, you know, that their camp, you know, we, we had liberally paused here, but it was Oscar Grant Plaza in Oakland. In Pittsburgh, where there's a whole, and, and two years ago there was a, a brutal beating of an African-American youth, one of the things that the community did was there were lots of rallies, there were lots of um, um, actions that happened, but one of the things that people, particularly from Occupy um, Pittsburgh, and I went and I got the chance to visit them, they're one of the last, you know, they just unfortunately got closed down like a couple weeks ago, but they were one of the last occupies, had over 100 tents. And one of the things that they were fighting for was to take up the name of this victim, Jordan Miles, and, and that were beaten by three plainclothes um, Pittsburgh policemen two years ago. And one of the things that they did was a, 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 a write-in campaign to make Jordan Miles you know, the uh, county district attorney, and they created this whole election process around this uh, victim of police brutality to sort of raise up the level of what had happened to him, but to make it a more mass struggle, and that was their contribution. And one of the other things that I think is, is important is, as of now, the Occupy movement has lost ground in the various cities in actual encampments, but they've taken up the housing struggle all over the country. Occupy for Homes is now the big rallying cry. Foreclosures is now the big rallying cry of the entire Occupy movement. <laughs> 25 cities just had, 
I mean, all across the country had actions specifically around foreclosures that it just, you know, and this is something that is happening over and over again. We could talk about December 1st, February 4th. These are the actions that are now, we don't have, you know, actual parks anymore. We're going to take over homes and we're going to support people that are facing foreclosure. This is, I mean, just, this is just even just last week and, and this week alone. Occupy DC, taking up and going directly to Freddie Mac. We have folks in, um, you know, of course, here in East New York, we still have the struggle going on, but just in other parts of the city, it is now going to people's houses. This is happening in Florida. This is happening in Philly. This is happening in the Midwest, where people are going and unevicting people. <laughs> that they're staying, and, they're, and this is, again, families of color, white families, but this is now the struggle, that we're now going to take over the dumpsters when the, when the marshals come, that we're now going to stand in front of people's houses and we're going to un-evict people. This is what the Occupy movement is starting to do. But Monica just raised, and I, and I want to just end with this about just concrete examples, about how this has influenced our struggle. We can pretty much say occupy anything at this point in time, and it's great. You know, everything is occupy. But I want to just bring people's attention to this, that another struggle is coming that is very important, and particularly black struggle that we need to be looking at, is occupy for Mamiya on April 24th. <laughs> So in D.C. on April 24th, as people know, is Momia's birthday. And, and, and that the movement, it's beautiful to watch us now, that the emails and the Twitter is going out about Occupy for Momia. Going to the Justice Department on the 24th and going to D.C. and occupying that area. And people are looking, this is national now. So what that means, again, the reviving of Momia's struggle to a whole new layer, a whole new sector of activists around let's occupy for Momia. So again, wanting to just raise this and opening up the discussion for everyone. This is, I mean, whatever we can do, whatever ways that we could be using the word occupy, let's use it. But in particularly, if we can also be mobilizing and thinking about April 24th, can we all be in DC for Momia?